We are streaming live on YouTube and on Facebook and on the Square and Square Premium Club site. So welcome to everyone. So glad that you could join us today. We did a live session on Monday this week with Kay and Kathy. They're here this week. We are doing lots of filming for different classes and we are working on our Quilt Club Week. And we're going to be talking a lot about that today. We talked a little bit about it on Monday at the end of our uh, live session. But but we're going to talk about it more today and give you some more details and we're also going to be having a live session on friday at 11 o'clock oh we're doing that we are, oh, we are. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can tell they just got notifications <laughs> So we're going to be doing that. Uh, there's a chance we may do it a little bit earlier on that day, but okay. Friday morning for sure. We'll be okay, doing okay. one Friday morning. And um, <laughs> we'll talk more about Quilt Club Week and we'll talk more about Premium Club and, and the difference in what they are as we go along today. And we also have some quilts and a little bit of actual teaching that we're going to do. And we're going to tell you about some of the classes that we filmed yesterday so that you can get all excited about Quilt Club Week. And we will start sign-ups on Friday of this week so Friday on our live session we'll Sign tell up. you more about Sign it up. and you can today go to the uh, quilt club and sign up with your email and that way you'll get all of the notifications you won't have to think oh did I see it on Facebook or YouTube or whatever it'll go directly to your email so that's why we're wanting you to go and sign up for quilt club week and that way basically what that is saying is is that i want to know more information about this and i want to make sure i don't miss any information about it it'll be right there in your email uh, box waiting for you so while we've been uh, here this week filming of course we've had our meals together and we've sat around and visited <laughs> and and i've known these two wonderful quilters and ladies for over 20 years but i did learn some new things this week <laughs> that I didn't know before. And during the filming yesterday, uh, Kathy in one of her classes talked about when she got her first sewing machine. And I thought, oh, that's such a cool thing to know about when we got our first sewing machine. So I'm going to let the girls tell you about when they got their first sewing machine and the first project that they made on that. Um, a lot of you know my story. I was 15 when I bought my first sewing machine. I was saving money for a car and my grandmother said you need a machine and so we went down and she spent $300 of my money that I was saving <laughs> for a car. But I was so excited because I could set it up in my bedroom on a little desk. I didn't have to share it with my sisters. sisters. I didn't have to put it up and down in the living room. It was my first little sewing corner and I was a garment maker at age 15 mm -hmm. I made everything that I wore my senior pictures in yeah. a tailored jacket I made wow. um, I had worked at a little variety store that had flat folds and um, I would get a box in and be so excited to dig through it and put it out on the shelves and pick something out and I'd call my grandmother who was just an exquisite seamstress she knew that there were 127 stitches in a man's collar I mean she knew it all she could take nothing and turn it into a Cinderella gown. I mean, she was something. Wow. But I would call her and I'd say, oh, it's 60 wide and it's a yard and seven eighths. What can I make? And she would say, well, a long sleeve shirt with a collar or a pair of trousers or a skirt with a waistband. I mean, oh she goodness. knew exactly. <laughs> she, wow. She really was. So that was her and my mom were the two that I grew up sewing. And so I was so excited to have that that machine yeah. and a very nice one. I started out on a nice one, which I think is important. Um, it, mm -hmm. um, so many times people start sewing, and I know in this season of 2020 that we've had, a lot of people have started sewing that's never never sewn so. before. And, it, and if they're frustrated or if things aren't working correctly, they think it's them when no, it's really their the tools machines, or the machines. equipment, their mm -hmm. machine. And mm -hmm. so I encourage you that if you don't have a machine that you get along with, no matter how much money it was, whether it was a hundred bucks or whether it was ten thousand dollars, if you have a machine that you don't get along with, don't let that stop you or stifle right, you. Right, because it will uh, stifle you. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. don't think it's you. It could be what you're working with. So see what you need to do to get a, get something different or improve on that situation. Don't don't let it stop you. Right. So right. who wants to go first about their first oh, machine? Oh, I'll go first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So um, I did. My mother had a sewing machine, and for the longest time, I I worked using her sewing machine. But um, she had one of those knee ones where you it makes you mm. go 
when yeah, you push you the knees. The knee. So I had a really hard mm -hmm. time when the new ones came out and they had those knee lifts. Yeah, and I kept trying. I kept lifting my my um, pedal instead of. Uh, what what brand was it? I don't know. Singer, I guess. I, was I, it a singer? I don't really remember. Oh, okay. But go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, my mom's machine was a singer, I and my and my grandmother's was a necky, and they were both so heavy you could not. Oh move yeah, them. Uh, my mother's yeah. was in a cabinet, and, yeah. and everything, yeah. and and um, you know she always told me don't touch the tension, don't touch, <laughs> don't, yeah. touch. don't touch. <laughs> so um, my actual machine that I owned myself, uh, I got for a graduation present, and I you would have thought that I would have been so excited about it, but I was very disappointed <laughs> that it, I got a sewing machine. <laughs> And my story goes that two years before, when my brother graduated, he got a trip to Hawaii. <laughs> and I was like, really looking for a sewing machine some... or Hawaii? You know? <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, where am I going? Europe or whatever. But, you know, to when we went to Hawaii, the whole family went. So it really wasn't, I think it was just an excuse to say, okay, this is your graduation yeah. present. You could have went to Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, just across <laughs> down the road. <laughs> That's right. So, um... We went to Hawaii, so I got the sewing machine. But, you know, the moral of the story is I made a career out of my sewing machine, and I bet you any money he doesn't know where his pictures are. No, I thought that it. was good. Good twist to no. the end of the story. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, my mother, she sewed. So we had a Sears Kenmore. She had the cams in the top, and it was in the cabinet. And we made majority of our clothes. Uh, when she was younger, I, she did quilt before she had... Uh, the kids, uh, if you don't know, I am the eighth child that she had, and I'm the only girl. So uh, when I came along, I was probably the princess. You were the Pretty talk special. of the town. I was the talk she? of the town. Yes, I was. Finally. So, but, you know, I was talk of the town. Those pews had finally a girl. So, uh, but she sewed and did all, did clothes mainly for me and her and she, we were. She was in um, homemakers club. She did that and made her coats. And I still have one of her coats that she made. And you know, my mom had a coat when mm -hmm. we cleaned out the house. We found a beautiful little uh -huh. tailored coat but that she, she had, and it was. She was so tiny. You know, I mean, we knew she was a tiny lady, yeah. but to think that that's the size she was when she got married, and to see all that detail. Yeah. yeah. Where, so it was something that they did. They did. Yeah. 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 Uh, my husband gave me my first sewing machine, my actual sewing machine. It was our first year after we were married in 71 for Christmas. So, uh, and I made clothes. I, back then I was making clothes until I had the children. Then I and you started, had girls. So. And I had two girls. Um, God knew what to give me, no boys. So uh, I made clothes for them, made their dresses and whatever I could because I was a stay-at-home mom with them. So I... If it could be sewn, I sewn it. I sewed it. I sewed it. I sewed so, it. So, did you say what your first project was? Well, mine was clothes. Clothes. It but was you clothes. don't remember that. I don't remember yeah. it. I worked yeah. in an office at the time. Uh -huh. So, it, it had to be clothes. And yeah. back then, it was polyester. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I had a lot of double polyester and, and double knits. Yeah. And yeah. so... Things um, like that, yeah. Yeah, that's probably what I did. I don't remember making quilts until maybe the girls. I remember mm -hmm. I have their log cabin quilts. Mm -hmm. And it was tied. It mm -hmm. wasn't even machine quilted. We tied it. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. was purple and white. So, I still have that. So... Uh, I think I've seen it. Yep. It's in the garage. <laughs> In the safe box. Up there, yeah. So my first yeah. project, um, I did do clothes. I don't. I belong to 4-H, and yeah. you know, you you did clothes there. But um, when I got my machine, my very first project was one of those biscuit quilts. So you make a pocket and you stuff it individually, and then you <laughs> did hand you use pantyhose? Um, I don't really remember what I, I remember. Pantyhose, no, pantyhose, yeah. Oh, you take one leg and stuff it in one biscuit and take the other, you cut them in half, really? and take the other leg and stuff it in the other biscuit. Yeah. I so I hand sewed them all together and I made a quilt and I made it for my brother because of course back then I thought that I had to justify why I was oh, yeah. spending money mm -hmm. on fabric and batting right. and, and things like that. So I made it for my brother and I believe I made it for his wedding. And this um, <laughs> could quilt. Uh, well, you know, that's what. <laughs> but it didn't have pantyhose in it. No, no, it was upper class. No, re no recycled pantyhose. No recycled pantyhose. So, um, um, 
I made it uh, for him for his wedding, and they had it on their bed, and then his <laughs> wife decided to wash it. Okay, well, of course, when you wash it, all that little cotton ball went into one little <laughs> corner. <laughs> oh, no. So I, I know it was 100% cotton and not the nice cotton. Yeah, yeah and it wasn't quilted at all yeah. either. It was just yeah. a little puff. Th- I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> None of us knew. <laughs> new <laughs> and then of course you know because i had to justify what i was doing i made a log cabin yeah. for yeah, my son log cabins and a, was, and a yeah. cute little quilt i think it was what was that holly hobby? holly hobby holly mm-hmm. hobby mm-hmm. uh quilt for my daughter and and stuff so and and eventually i i learned to um just make quilts for me and enjoy mm-hmm. them yeah mm-hmm. yeah and so yeah yeah yeah. Well, I, I grew up in a home where there was all type, I mean, it was all girls, so most of it was garment stuff. But, of course, all of the scraps went into, you know, something else. My grandmother, being um, a farm wife and growing up in a totally different time span on a farm than what anybody, even back when I was little, was growing up in. No running water, no electricity, all mm-hmm. that. They saved um, everything. And I remember one time her talking about the, I'm going to call it the life cycle of the the fabric, how you would go and buy the Mm -hmm. yardage and you would make the oldest girl a dress. And then (laughs) those scraps went down to make another girl a dress. And about even how the seams, you know, know, with quilting we sew a scant quarter inch seam, but with garments it's a five eighths. You know, have you ever thought about why? It's so much wider. It's so that you can let it right. out right. and take it oh, in. I didn't know because that. a garment never, yeah. n- never was finished until right. it was dead. It, Nobody yeah. could wear right. it anymore. Okay. You know. Right. And about how when all the little girls out and the hems, and remember those big yes. hems, yes. so that yep. they could so let it up, let up and down and, down and let it up mm-hmm. and down. And even the style of dresses they were, how they were a little bit more fitted here and then open, so that it could be worn, worn. for for years and yeah. by multiple people and you think about the the everyday check that they had about how the dad could have a shirt out of check the mom yeah. could have an apron out of the check. check you know the little girls could use the scraps and make dresses out of it and she even talked about how that the bodice when the bodice came off you know or the skirt came off how you know it could be the dress could be recycled into an apron or a pinafore, right. okay. and right. about how they had they had three dresses. They had um, a Sunday dress, they had an everyday dress, and they had a work dress. And when the work dress wore out, then your everyday dress went down to, to your bed. work dress, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and your best dress went to your other one, and then your new you dress new became your best or your dress. Sunday, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sunday. Uh, dress. Huh. And then she talked about how that even when the aprons and everything were wore out, how they stripped it, probably in about two and a half inch strips or whatever they had, and those strips actually went into the end of a mop handle. And this morning at breakfast, you were reading old sayings and about where they came from, you know, uh, back from the 1500s and up. But I remember the saying was, I'm as wore out as the end of a mop handle. And I never understood that. And that's because that's where the fabric Fabric goes to die. There's nothing that piece of fabric can do anymore except go into a mop handle and then Uh just completely wore out or disposed of. So the the life cycle of the fabric and the garments and stuff just really, you know, until actually the fabric was dead or the garment was dead. That was was all Hmm. it was. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. Um, this week, with and we talked about how all of us had 4-H memories and mm-hmm. stories that we we started with 4-H and did different things and and how that influenced us and it was it was pretty cool, cool to hear those stories. But while Kay and Kathy have been here this week, we have been filming for a brand new program that we're doing, which is called Quilt Club Week, and it's going to be the first full week of October, and we are um, highlighting a lot of. Um, piecing and stash busting type quilts and we're also doing uh, uh, binding the shortcut binding tool and we're doing um, machine quilting because we really want to teach the 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 fun and exciting everyday things that people need to get their quilts finished and accomplished for their quilts to be beautiful with all the tips and hints and shortcuts that we know I mean when you think about it all of us have 
probably over 40 years of sewing experience. So, mm. you know, close to 150 years of sewing experience here. Oh, that sounds really I good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but impressive, too, you know. Oh, yeah. So a lot of knowledge setting right here that we want to pass on to people. We also want to provide some fun and exciting things <laughs> for people to watch and for you to do and for you to even be able to replay. You know, I, I don't even have TV cable anymore. There is nothing on TV that no, I anymore. even want playing in the background while I'm working um, uh, there's just nothing on there that interests me on on any level I'm I'm done with the history channel I'm done with <laughs> now that shark week is over I'm done I'm with done discovery week. I'm you know I'm done with all of it and so I, I'm I'm just thinking I want to really provide some good fun mm -hmm. entertainment but also really good education for people things that you can put in for your everyday quilting and sewing and learn something and, and, um, and be able to improve on your work and have fun at the same time. I've always said with the square and square system that it's fast, fun, fabulous, and finished. And, you That's know, right. we've talked about a little bit about UFOs and unfinished projects in Monday's live session. And a couple of people came back with emails and posts and they were like, you really freed me up on being able, I'm kind of purging some stuff I know I'm not getting back to. And just how free that makes you feel to not yes. have that, that quilt guilt of those projects that you know you're not coming back to for right, whatever right. reason. Right, let, let it go. somebody else practice on them, learn on them, and help yeah. expand the, um, the the stuff you've got. Let it go somewhere else and live right. its life somebody and else be happy. Right. Move right. it through yeah. a process, yeah. just like right. the fabric. Yeah. Like, right, like yeah. we it does. Talking it about. has to be. It yeah. has to be up and gone because you know you're not going to go back to it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And... What's the point? There's too much beautiful fabric out there yeah, now so much we can that buy. I don't want to go we back to the old yeah. stuff that I had 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, it's, um, it's not if it's if it was fun and exciting, you would be using. Yes, it. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if it's not fun and exciting, then let someone on. else use it. Use it. And That's be right. Fun and That's exciting. Right. That's right. So some of the filming that we did this week, uh, if you don't know, if you've missed out on anything, or you don't know Kay and Kathy, or maybe it's your first time here with Square and a Square. Um, Kathy is a wonderful uh, machine quilter. She works on uh, just a regular tabletop yep. domestic machine. Yep. Not a, uh, probably you would say not a lot of bells and whistles. No, it no, only goes forward and backwards. backwards yeah. yeah, and so about how to use what you've got yeah. and get your machines quilted. We're going to give you some confidence and some education so that you can get that done. And one of the ones that we filmed yesterday was Trapunto. And oh, yes. when I think about Trapunto, I think about what my master quilter teacher that I had, besides my grandmother, and she did Trapunto, and all of her work was handwork, it was exquisite. You had to cut the back of the quilt, Correct. and you had to stuff it down in there, yep. with a little and poker do, thing. Yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that, and it was very meticulous, and, yeah. and it just kind of... There was several parts of it that I didn't enjoy, and several you rip the fabric yeah, in the back, and you yeah, really don't want to do that because it that. makes yeah. it weak. So when I saw you yesterday and how you did it, now over thirty yeah. years after of what I knew about it all those years ago, it really made me excited. Yeah, it's all and, done by machine, and There's I thought, no hand oh my to it. gosh, we can add this to our stuff. So yeah. simple mm -hmm. and and easy to yeah. do. So. Um, um, what do you want to tell us about that that you filmed yesterday? Um, well, it's it's done by machine. There's nothing that's done by hand, although you s can do this process by hand if you wanted to. I didn't say that yesterday, mm -hmm. but you could do the you process could, yeah. uh, by hand. And it's strictly working with the top of the quilt. And you get all of your yeah. trapunto done, and then, um, and then you're going to lay, put the three layers together and uh, quilt your quilt. So it's just, uh, it's a it's a great way to do it and you don't have to worry about it. You're cutting away a little of the batting and, and things like that. And there's no, if you cut your quilt and if you accidentally, snip, accidentally it, it, yeah. snip yeah. it, it's fixable and we talk about that. I and love everything. that part of it when yeah. you were filming that. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, I never thought about that. If you snip it, that don't worry, because yeah. here's a quick fix of mm -hmm. how to do it, and, right. and yeah. easy to do, and no one would ever know, and your quilt would continue to be healthy in all of those areas. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. the, the one thing about Trapunto is you need an enclosed space. 
you know, you, you have to have a stencil that's in enclosed. Uh, a design that's a design. enclosed. Yes, yes enclosed. a design that's yeah. enclosed. Now, could you do a, a turpunto on something like this? Oh, absolutely. But So you know, let's look down. Let's look at this I mean, better. Well, you know, yes, you could. Yeah. And, and if I did it, I would probably do just this flower here and maybe this flower here. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, just yeah. do the so larger. They pop up. Yeah, so they pop up and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you give you more. Really whatever idea. you trapunto is going to pop up. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. what trapunto is. It, mm -hmm. it makes a third dimension to your mm -hmm. Right. It gives you quilt. three dimensions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, okay. A, you know, like you said, it's a very old. Uh, they did it back in the 1500s. They yeah. did a lot of garment work yeah. with the embroidery and stuff mm -hmm. on it. So hmm. it was very yeah. Cool. And okay. thinking about that back in the history of some of the applique lectures and stuff I've done, uh, researching when applique started and what they did, a lot of that was put on the garments because the fabric was just kind of solid and plain. Right. Right. And so to give any design and depth to the fabrics yeah. that they wore, they had to do a trapunto or add a, yeah. um, a braid or an applique. Yeah. Or, or and it's a little warmer. It. When you add a little trapunto, yeah. that's an extra layer mm -hmm. of And they, of, of course, didn't there, have so. the central air and heat yeah. like we have yeah. nowadays. Mm -hmm. So now that we're looking at this one, let's go ahead and talk about panels. One of the sessions mm -hmm. that we filmed yesterday was on panel quilts. So there's so many great, wonderful panels out there. And so we chose just a couple of them to look at today in our live session from the class yesterday. So I'm going to let you two ladies take over on okay. these that we have here. Okay. This one was very easy. It was a panel. It was a panel. I didn't do anything to it. What I needed to do was I did measure from the top to the bottom to get the measurements for my flying geese. Right. To kind of give a, a general measurement because, right. you know, this came out, what, three by six, I think That's these correct. are. So yes. we decided how many we could get out of that length right. on that size. Yeah. So, so that's how you determine yes. that. And then I took a pretty coordinating, Just coordinating fabric, fabric and, you know, uh, sewed this side to there and this side to that. And then uh, what I did was whatever was... Left we had it, longer. had it longer, and then I just cut the size of the flying geese. Right. So that right. It, we just you know, made it match. Very simple. Made it work. I, I, the panel yeah, just, made it work. Yeah. Panel was longer. Mm -hmm. It's still one of my favorite it is. things oh, to I do because it. it's it is. just so easy. And you know, this is oh, gorgeous. Yeah, panels. it's well, a we real icy. buy panels. Yeah. I know. We, we buy panels. Buy I love panels. panels. I know. Mm -hmm. I do, too. Because we I, think they're so pretty, they're so cute. Oh, I'll figure out what yeah, to do. Yeah, and then you get home and you go, oh, God, what am I going to do? Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is our slice of sunshine pattern. Right. This is our right. slice of sunshine Now, let's say, okay, I don't want to do and take all that time. I've got some maybe... Oh, yeah. uh, 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 two and a half inch squares, or if I've got jelly rolls, you could just do strip jelly it. rolls and strip, strip it, it. Mm -hmm. yeah. right here yeah. instead of doing the flying yeah. geese yeah, if you don't have coordinating fabric. Mm -hmm. Maybe you bought that jelly roll along with it. Or you could do four patches. You could do some nine patches. But it's basically making this and then adding your outside and then chopping right. it off yep. to match. Yep, perfect. And when I looked at this, I thought, oh, this would be really simple and easy to make just a little bit larger to have a Christmas uh, lap. Throw. Right, sure. Right, right. yeah. Right. Yeah, you could mm -hmm. just make more borders on it and stuff. And, and I always thought about maybe taking this going this way. Mm -hmm. Yes, doing your flying geese you know, in multiple directions. Mm -hmm. Right, vertical, mm -hmm. right. Horizontal. vertical, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of like a... Yeah, this mm -hmm. way and this way, and then maybe extend that one down that way, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, lots of ideas so. for We're going to talk about the shortcut binding tool here in a few minutes, but this is the flange right here, and look how it adds that beautiful extra little color, that mm -hmm. pop on there. And this is all done with a shortcut binding tool, which we have two very long, in-depth videos on now right. on YouTube and yes. on our, our Facebook page. But we also filmed the short, the shorter method, method of it yesterday, of it. because when you're first learning it, it's nice to have that in depth, you know, of how this works. But once you know it, you just need to go back for that in, little little, little review hints. Mm -hmm. to go back and do it again. And as I look at these corners here, think how neat it would be to trapunto those little babies. Oh yeah, in yeah, the that would be so cute. How yeah, pretty mm -hmm. that yeah. would be. Yeah, it would be. There. It would be. And whenever you do a binding, I, I'm a stripe binding girl. Oh, they're great. I love stripe yeah. bindings. Put them on the bias, mm -hmm. you know, and that was something I was thinking about this morning. Maybe mm -hmm. we could do a little thing for, mm -hmm. uh, show how you do mm -hmm. a bias binding. Right. Well, Start at the very you know, beginning cause yeah. we because we want beginners, people yeah. who have never done. And even if they have done it, then they might pick up a tip or hint. Right. But I will tell you, over the years, of all the different places I've gone and all the different judging that I've done, 
that's usually what makes one quilt win over another, another mm -hmm. is when I get to the binding. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Judges check mm -hmm. out that binding. That binding, a lot. right. Yeah. 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 And a way that um, in the judging, something that uh, we do to check, like if a big quilt is hanging or sometimes we don't get to judge them on a table like this, is you pick the bottom up. And you bring it and to the middle, up. halfway mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. and, and you check it, to see if it's the same, same width same in the middle square. as it is in the bottom. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if you can, you bring the top, top down, down and down. check it too, mm -hmm. and then you know. It's a quick yep. way a judge can tell, is this quilt really square? square. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple of more panels over here. Let's look at those. And ladies, panel, you know, where you're hanging them, I know this is kind of a little offset, but it, it just kind of popped in the brain, and when it pops in, I've got just to say us. it. Uh, I've started hanging my quilts in my garage. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's good insulation. I mean, you know, I, I can pull my car in. I have one right there, you know, a, a panel hanging there. It was a map thing that I made. And so it fits in the garage. It, it it's a fits garage. in the garage. So you forget it's just, where you're going or you don't have yeah. your navigation plugged in. Right. It's right there. And quilt set. Yeah. We're going to Texas. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it brings me... Joy. I smile. It brings you joy. And yes. I put one back by my back door but in the garage, too, yeah. because I don't have a whole lot of hanging space in my yeah. house to hang the quilts, especially yeah. panels. Yeah. And I love panels. Yeah. So I've started yeah. hanging them in my garage. So okay. you can yep. do that, girls. You can do that. And it's fun to do. So this one, we had, uh, I pieced this. Uh, made stars. This was in part of the panel. This was part of the panel, and I made the six stars across. Well, the panel itself would not directly fit the whole that thing, so I had to size. make a coping strips mm -hmm. so that it would come out to the correct size. And of I what love I needed. that you call it coping. Coping. Because yeah, you got to cope. cope with I gotta, the, you got to cope, cope with the it. size of this <laughs> yeah, yeah. to fit this. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, and and yeah. the size of the stars were dictated because of the little fussy cuts right, that right, you right, had. Right. Absolutely. So that made the stars a certain size. Absolutely. Right. And you can go to your square and square book and get all your sizing for yep. your stars. You right. can either do it so, as a star or you can do it, you know, this row and right. This well, you could do and, these as option as ones, ones and then your geese on the outside. Yeah. So that dictated what the width needed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then the rest of it was easy because it's, it's just, just one just panel. Solid yeah, we it's just sound mm -hmm. panel yeah. at the and top. See how I like it too. That it's just plain strip at the top. You didn't have to yeah. do the stars at the nope. top. Nope, no. Yeah, if you had the fabric and you wanted to, go for you it. You could if not just, just put, put whatever strip. you wanted in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, would any of this be good for a, uh, a practice trapunto? Oh, Ooh. sure. Yeah. Oh, I think the owl would be there. Yeah, and the pumpkins. And, you know, even it, it depends on how much time you want to yeah. spend on it. You know, yeah. sometimes you've got a panel and, you know, you, you don't want to just, spend a lot of time on it. But, mm -hmm. you know, just depends on what you what you want to do yeah. with it. Yeah, this okay. one would stand out really nice if you mm -hmm. if you did that one. And, you know, and just are. after watching the video yesterday when we were filming it, now all of this is just popping up in my head. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I can do that. We could trapunto that. <laughs> yes. 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 And, and just a simple little design that right. turns it would into be a good way. Yes. It would be a good yes. way to start. And practice. And yeah. practice. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you have to lose? If if you, you know, like she said, if you cut or do something, then you could always put another leaf or cut something else out and put something yeah. else on there. Yeah. And cover it up. If well, you and really... I can explain to you how. I you know. Can get... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but. In my okay. video. And then this right. has got that little flange. I yep. love how the flange just adds another little color Touch. right at the end. And it just really puts your quilts, I think, over the top. Um, be even a simple quilt right. makes it more Absolutely. special. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And we can get our quilts and binding on there really, really quick. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay, now this one was a panel one. Tell us about Correct. this. This one was a panel that was six inches. Now the the name of the pattern is Mega Stars, And the original panel was written with an eight inch uh, square block. Mm -hmm. block. Mm -hmm. And so um, we did several panels that were eight inches. Well, this one was six inches, and we're like, well, uh -oh. what, what, what are we're, we going to do? Yeah. You know, I don't mm -hmm. want to design a whole new quilt around it. I just want to make mm -hmm. this one fit. So, again, we did coping strips. So, so this was cut in black frame. Yep. Mm -hmm. Strips mm -hmm. around yep. it. Yep. So you take your six inch and you add extra, a little bit more than what you need. That's right. Yeah, you want to add, exact. you know, if this is six inch and this be eight inch, then I would it probably add about a good two inches on each side 
for okay. strips okay. to go around I see it. What you're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then trim and then it up to it up, it up yeah. to your eight yeah. and a half inches. Right. Well, those that are in our premium club, we talk about oversizing our strips right. and then trimming there it up perfect right. as we go. We do that, of course, with the options of the square and a square system. We trim off and we get right. it perfect. And then that when we work with strips, we don't hardly ever cut them exactly the right. size we no. need. No, nope. no. Because our cutting is not, we're human. It's, it's our personal private measurements. measurements. Yes. And, um, you know, we're not going to cut them perfect. We're not going to sew them perfect. So if we overcut them a little bit, then we have room to come back and trim them up and right. make them perfect. And it really, I, once again, I think put your quilts over the top and makes them look more professional and more precise because they are. But right. it wasn't that you were the meticulous, you know, 100% piece or, yeah, piecer right. that got mm-hmm. everything done mm-hmm. perfect. Because we mm-hmm. don't. No. We don't. Right? No. Okay. No. All right. No. So, um. Uh, let's talk about the the binding tool. Anything else you want okay. to tell us about panels or trapunto nope. before we move on? I'm, I I'm think good. that's pretty good. Just okay. pull them out. You'll see have, what you have. have to watch the classes because we yes. have a trapunto well, class. Well, we have a lot more to tell them, but they're yes, in the class. But, okay. okay. But yeah, yeah, just pull those panels out. See what you have, ladies. This afternoon when we're done, go pull those panels out and let's get started. You can yeah. get started and have, be ready for it. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so we're going to talk about our tool. Can Let's we grab see that? that little white piece of yes, paper, that's what I'm gonna, right? Yep. Uh, right that oh, one right, right there. Right yeah, there. that way you can see yep. the ruler. Oops. Sorry. Lay it on there. Okay, so let's tell us about the shortcut binding tool. So we already have the long videos that are already on YouTube and Facebook that can go and watch. We filmed um, more like a 10 or 15 minute one yesterday right, right. that just has the basics on it. Right. And the shortcut binding tool, of course, is made by Kay and Kathy of the Franklin Quilt Company. And what the shortcut binding tool is, it does the flange and the binding at the same time. Same and time. I think that's one piece. It's, it's just all so one piece. Cool. It makes it so easy. Yep. And it's all machine stitched down. Yes, you can do your flange. You know, the previous way they did it was you made your flange, you sewed it to your front of your quilt, Mm -hmm. then you made your binding, you sewed it to the front, you took it around to the back, and you hand-stitched it down. That was the procedure. And now we do it all by hand. And now I do it by hand because I just... By machine. By machine, Machine. yes. By (laughs) machine. No, yes. By machine. Sorry. Um... Because I just don't have time to sit and hand do them all the time. Well, as we were and talking my, about this morning, yeah. we were talking about how we don't have the time to do all of that. But also, we were talking about our, our hands, hands aren't yeah, what they used to be. Hands are our just, eyesight. Our <laughs> eyesight, to yes. Needles, to thread those needles. Yeah. 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 So what it does, it helps you to cut. Yes, you can use a regular ruler with it. But I've decided I needed a, a, a ruler. <laughs> The, the special I needed tools tool. always make everything more simple you know, and more yep. easy. We needed a tool that had everything on it that we needed to do. So it helps you to cut your flange, and your flange is the widest one you'd cut, and your binding is your next measurement. So this helps you to cut it. Actually cut your strips. Cut your strips. You know, uh, the flange is cut usually crosswise, and my binding is cut on the bias. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about maybe doing a little short, yeah. show you how you do yeah, your binding we'll bias. Yeah, we'll add that. I bias. think that's a good yeah. thing to add yeah. that. Yeah. But you can do it straight if you don't have enough fabric. Right, if you, you don't have do enough fabric, straight, you but, can you know, do it straight. But I just, I'm yeah. a bias binding girl. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. It also helps you put your tails together. You know, when you're putting those tails together at the end, um, sometimes you get them twisted and and turned around, and you've got a measure, and do and you all don't of want that. a thick bump, and you don't want a thick bump, yeah. so it helps you to do that diagonal cut. And yes, I know you're all are going to say, "What? I can't cut it before I sew it together." Yes, you can. So it's a very, if you know your left from your right and your top from your bottom, it's going to be very easy to do your tails together. And then the opposite side of my ruler, on the other side, it helps you to do a three. A two-sided fl- two-sided binding, and do we bring. Okay. I'll, I'll let me. I'll, I'll go it. grab it. You talk. You can well, go. one thing that I love about the short cut binding tool is you saw me kind of going like this along yes, all saw of that. the edges, yeah. and I'm trying to find the place oh, where, it, where you where stop and start and stop. because yeah. normally there's a bump there, but yeah. with right. the, the binding tool there no. is no bump. You nope. cannot tell. Mm-mm. It is one continuous, continuous. strip right. mm-hmm. when you get it on there, and it's very easy to do. I can't find. There, you can't tell. Yeah, no. You cannot you tell at all. You can't. So not only does it... Uh, and do also the... as a judge, when you're... I'm sorry. I no, that's okay. No. That's also okay. as a judge, when uh, you're looking at the bindings, you look to see if there is a bump. 
that's you right. know, in there, yeah. there's a thickness. Yeah. And, and they check those corners too. We, mm -hmm. and we showed you how to do the corners just perfect mm -hmm. to get them down to lay flat. And if you, um, if you have that extra thickness in that bump, it doesn't make all this lay flat and smooth. Right. You right. don't have enough fabric to cover the right. bump and it just right. looks sloppy. Right. 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 So. And then some of the comments we get is, well, what happens to the back? Well, you match your threads to match your back. Yes. Mm -hmm. You so know, your bobbin would match your back. Your, mm -hmm. Right. Your and bobbin it just looks would match like your back. And it does. You know, yeah. you can't tell it. You're never going to get it in the ditch, girls. You know, you just get over it. <laughs> and and it's going to be right next to that ditch. Yep. But we're getting those quilts done. But this is the two-sided binding. So I have a Halloween here. This was just charms, quick, easy one to do. I had some leftover hexy, so I just pop those on there. But I have this. This has your green and black. But then, after Halloween, I can just flip it over, and I have my Thanksgiving. That's really cool. My fall one. Mm -hmm. And so then I cool. have the binding that matches on the back. That's great. That's so it's two different idea. colors. Yeah. It's two different mm -hmm. colors binding. Mm -hmm. So that's another part that if you ha if you have the ruler and you don't know that, mm -hmm. that's another part of another your step. tool. Yep. Another step. So, mm -hmm. you know, use it. Read that instructions. That helps. Yes. <laughs> Read the instructions and watch the <laughs> And then video. watch the videos. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that yeah. helps. Yes. And I love this unique part up here that has the top right and bottom right. left yes. because that helps you to put those tails together. And to know how and to it, turn it. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. It's, and it's a great tool. I, we get so many compliments on it. Yes. And, it yeah. is. It is. And we, a lot of the... the um, members of the premium club they have the shortcut binding tool and are using it and we're just getting rave reviews good, from good, them good 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 that's what we like to good. hear people that are we actually, like that uh, yeah putting the pedal to the metal and doing it yeah we've yeah. even sent uh, rulers to france france yeah yeah yeah, yeah lady over there she it's came simple. to market one time and ordered them and yep. she so continues to order from yeah, us she and she's, she's converted our around. instructions into, into french, french. Yes, oh, that's cool. The video, cool. Kate's yeah, the video, video uh -huh. is in French. Yeah, yeah, I speak French in that one. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. knows how to speak French. Yeah, that's I could speak French. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. yeah. So, um, one of the other things that um, we're going to be teaching in the Quilt Club Week, um, we've talked about the Trapundo, we've talked about the binding tool, but we're going to be learning lots of different quilting techniques yes. and mm -hmm. leaves and straight lines yes. and all of these to put into your quilt. So, these next quilts here have all been quilted by you. Yes. And uh, so, you know, if, as you look at them, if there's anything that you want to, you know, to talk to them about sure. on here. This one I thought about, you know, I wanted, of course, to show the flange and everything. I also wanted to show how we used in the border. The um, uh, um, It's not a border print, but it is a directional print right. with the Transcontinental Railroad and how we put that in the border. But yeah. as far as the quilting on here, what do you want to tell us about any of this? Okay, so when I quilted it, I... I um didn't have a lot of time and so I just kind of did an overall pattern. I wanted uh, to get it done and mm -hmm. you know sometimes when you're quilting some quilt just needs to be done and right. others you want to mm -hmm. take the time with. Mm -hmm. So I just did an overall pattern on the inside of the quilt and then I didn't want to disrupt that right. flow of mm -hmm. the tracks. railroad track so my stitching is just along the railroad tracks oh, like yeah. that so that just made that really yeah. nice I like that uh -huh. I hadn't even noticed that oh yeah and, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and then on the outside I just put stars and and yeah. all of it was done without a stencil or anything mm -hmm. it was just something easy just to do and I believe I used a walking foot on uh -huh. when I'm doing those right okay. I'm, I don't get it straight unless so I'm how do you choose what color fabric you used on that because you've got threads. reds you get you, yes yeah. your your the threads red. I'm sorry I yes. like to choose I mean because you've got different colors there I know well, I like that's to my hardest part. <laughs> yeah, sorry. What I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I chose this particular thread because it's a shade of uh, well, it's kind of that greenish, grayish, khaki. Khaki. Uh, khaki. khaki. There we go. Khaki. khaki. That was the word we were looking, we were looking for. for yes, <laughs> khaki. And um, I like to have a thread that you can see on this as well as the dark or the red so that you it doesn't disappear 
you know, when you're going through the circle, it doesn't disappear on the fabric. Oh, okay. So you can see that overall pattern. Oh, okay. You know, I don't like it when, you know, you've got a, a red thread and you're going red here and then all of a sudden you're in here and you can't mm -hmm. see where yeah, that where is. It and, what it, and it's like, oh, I'm, you oh, know. Okay. So that's, I like to, a lot of times I will like to match the thread to the background or whatever it is I'm I'm quilting. If I'm doing a, and we'll talk about that as we go down the, as we, okay. as we get more okay. in depth with because, that. Because, and then in your bobbin, you use the same color. I use the same color through the yeah. whole thing. And okay. I use a, a, a 50 weight cotton in both the bobbin and the top. So that that way I don't have to adjust any kind of tension Tensions on Tensions and do anything yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. And we talked in depth, or you talked in depth in the filming yesterday when we went into the threads yeah. about how to know which thread to go in the bobbin, how to know which thread to go in the top, how yep. to deal with a difficult thread. And we're not going to tell them any more nope. about that nope. today, but oh my goodness. Was <laughs> yes. That, I think you learned a little. I it learned was. a lot. It was, was a deep a discussion. It was, it was excellent. <laughs> yeah. You ready to move yep. on? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I have to look at it because I don't remember what it looked <laughs> like. This one you did a long time well, yeah, ago. Yeah, we I did. did. I did yeah. do a really, really yeah. long time yeah. ago. And um, I always want to have a little square. I love this little... Oh, you get a little... Just a little, little daisy. Daisy or whatever it is. Yeah. Because I'll start in the middle. Or actually, I'll start on the corner. No, I'll start in the middle. I don't know. It doesn't matter. And then well, I'll... yes, it does matter. <laughs> Which well, way do you... No, it doesn't do you... matter. Oh, it doesn't matter? Why? why? Well, you probably can't because, I, because I used green thread here. Oh, okay. So I did this little one and then just kind of picked it up and did that little one and then picked it so up. So you and stopped and started at each I one. I did, but I didn't cut my threads. I just continued on. I just lifted it up and moved, moved. it over. Oh, okay. I didn't have to um Because that's starting and stopping. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it just okay. kind of, you know, it's not that mm -hmm. much thread from here to here to mm -hmm. waste and I just cut mm -hmm. it all when I'm when I'm all done. Just fly low and keep going. That's right. That's right. And then I took a black and with the black um, I did this and then I came in and did a spiral on it and then, you know, just continued uh, throughout. So once I got into the black, I could just do it continuously. And I'm going to talk. Oh, yeah, maybe you can see a little bit better back here. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. Maybe not. And this kind yeah. of looks like yeah. the pumpkin vine. Like. Yeah, it does. And that's what I wanted it yeah. to do. And on. Oh, yes. And on this. Yeah, you can see it better back here. I did. Yeah, that little. Mm -hmm. thing and you can see it better on the back than you can on the front yeah. and this is um, a pattern that is found in the square and square volume one reference book it's one of those that's in there and it's really very easy it's just that option seven diamond and a plain square and that's a row mm -hmm. and then we have the same option seven diamond going that way. vertical that way. horizontal that's vertical and a bigger square and that's, that's a, row. a row so we didn't put it together as, as stars, a star no, because it that's a nightmare yeah yeah right. that could be a nightmare but if you yeah, put it right. together in that rows, way it works right really then right. it works yeah. Yeah. oh and i love how you did the two different colors oh, I never noticed well you know why before. we did that you ran because you ran out of fabric, ran out of fabric. <laughs> yeah so you can do that yeah, yeah. yeah. we've done that a lot oh, yeah and yeah. some of our we've done that a lot especially on borders when we don't have when we didn't have enough fabrics to do all the entire border if we had two that was similar we did half Mm -hmm. on one, one and then half and on the, the other, other one or we did a lot of piano keys yeah we even had smaller pieces yeah and make it make yeah. it work and it doesn't look like an oops it looks like oh well, no. look at that design yeah, how yeah. Element. i like yeah. that i never thought of that yeah. you know yeah. that type of yeah thing. Yeah. and it's, so we've got that little orange pop going yeah. there, there with that go. flange yeah yeah cute cute perfect okay perfect and this one is in the quick and easy book that comes with the original ruler and so it just uses option ones and sashing and a setting, and then it has uh, the little vine through there, and it's got the little orange pop. Mm -hmm. So you have did some pretty, I love all of this quilting. You've got a lot of detail. Yeah, I'll, and I wanted to um, echo the vine and the mm -hmm. leaves so that they would stand out just a little bit. And again, I use the same color thread as the background because when I'm doing quilts and qu quilting them, I like... To the first thing you want to look at is the color and the design. I don't want that quilting to be immediately there, and I want them to come back in and look at it and go, "Oh my God, what what did she do? What did she because do?" Because really so, and truly, when you look at a quilt, the first thing that attracts you to it is the color, mm -hmm. Absolutely. and then the next thing you do is you look at the the design. pattern or the mm -hmm. design, right? And then you look at the quilting, and all of that should enhance. It's like Correct. it's like cooking right. and putting all the good flavors together. Those flavors mellow and and um, 
Um, and hand, you and, know, you it know, just, just yes. come together nicely. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I actually brought this kit with this fab, this with me because you because I had intentions of of <laughs> working on a bad, project. I kind of cracked the whip. You cracked you the whip. You were coming to camp. I thought I was coming <laughs> to camp and just sewing for myself. But I did. I pulled yeah. this out. I thought, oh, I can work well, on okay, that. Okay, we need to do this. We need to do this. <laughs> yeah. We need to do this. You're binding this morning. You were putting yeah, the yeah, binding, yeah, we're binding, binding on a quilt. On the one okay, thing. But yeah. In the studio this yeah. morning, she's over there working on a binding for us. <laughs> yeah, yep. And know. and my design out here is in in black. But you'll notice that on the back, um, oh, I yeah. did. It's a beautiful back. Let's go ahead and okay. And, uh, okay. And this was actually you would never dream that this is a, the Pony Express fabric. Oh, mm -hmm. is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. And, uh, How cute. Uh, yeah. About There's 10 a horse years ago. Yeah, yeah. The Pony. The Indian Scouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I and I love doing this little one and this is one of the designs that I will uh, show in my class and it's just in the little border there's a little border right here you can't even see what it looks like on the front, front. but on the back you can see that mm -hmm. that it just it's just so fun and then I did leaves that's another thing yeah I love that that mm -hmm. um, so I will pretty. be teaching um, and you match your thread on the back the same as the front. I did. Just I did. because you don't have to mess with tensions. Yeah, um, I, especially it's on okay. a black. I, especially on a black because if yeah. I had an orange color, it might bob and color. It it might show a little bit. Right. But um, right. the one thing, the one tip I'll give you about that is if you have um, a color that's popping through and something and you're working with black <laughs> i take a pigma pen and i ink out all of the all of the dots <laughs> yeah I, I yeah i think that's a good a good uh, tip Shh, yeah. don't tell anybody yeah. so i have but, you know it's perfect but i like that you know because people think they have to have their back can't show any um, of the design yeah. or have a different yeah. color different on the back. Color. Yeah, I just, so I like that. that this looks you really can. cool. Yeah, yeah I it's seen so. this one a long time either. Yeah, yeah. this one's this one's been done yeah. quite yeah. a few yep. years now. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so this one here is um, Turkey Tracks, and it's mm -hmm. also in the uh, reference book, the Volume One book, and. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I think everything that we could talk about on this quilt <laughs> is just over the top beautiful. Uh -huh. I think the fabrics and mm -hmm. I think the design, the quilting, the uh, just the location of everything, just a little bit of a shade different. I just think this is just really a beautiful and exquisite quilt. And um, I'll let you talk about the quilting, but as right. far as the block and the design goes, it can't get any more simpler Simple. right. than mm -mm. what it is. No. Right. It's just um, a, a fat rectangle with a square and a, another square, and then the option three flying geese with a little square. So these go together really well. In fact, Kay made these blocks oh, yeah. a, about 18 months ago, and I think she did them uh, like an afternoon and evening and then yeah. finished them up the next morning. Next, and put yeah, the I think together. so. Yeah. 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 And a design opportunity here is that all of these are flying geese right here. That's option three of the square and a square mm -hmm. system. So think about if you turn it so that the blue is along this side instead sure. of this that side. That would give that mm -hmm. zigzag look. It would yeah. give a yeah. different look yeah. here right. with the border. Mm -hmm. And then it does here next to the white, separating it the white right. from the white mm -hmm. and, and so on. So that right there would give it a totally different, different look. Different look. Oh, if yeah. You put the blue on the other side. And yeah. so anytime you're working with what I call laying down flying geese, you're sewing the ends together, uh, you have that design opportunity of where do you want your color here or right here. There. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Yeah. And it just and it it um it really doesn't matter when you make these flying geese if you start with the square in the middle that's dark and the strips that are light, or mm -hmm. if you start with the light in the middle right. and the strip right. dark. Right. Because okay. see Whatever. how you're creating a triangle right. there Correct. when you sew them together and you're creating mm -hmm. one here. Mm -hmm. So actually you could make twenty that have blue centers with white strips and you twenty could. that mm -hmm. don't. And the only reason why you would mix it up like that is how much fabric, fabric you, you have. have. Right. Because the right. centers, you're going to use less, less fabric, fabric of. True. And the strips, you use more, more fabric of. So that's kind of a, a tip there for you on that. So tell us what you, you want okay, to do about this. Okay, as far as quilting goes. Um, and, and this was wonderful because I love it when somebody gives me a whole nice block to work whole with. A big design element. So I remember that I had to think about this. And, the, and that's one of the things I'll talk about is how to how to quilt your quilt how to decide how to decide what what to 
what to design. What to so do. it, it sits on my wall for a little while until I decide what I want to do. But of course, I usually have, um, I go through a bunch of stencils that I have at home and what size fits it and, and things like that. So um, when I found this one, I, oh, this is it. Because I, it looks um, a little bit more modern mm -hmm. to me. So I thought this stencil was a little mm -hmm. bit more modern. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll notice that this design, the thread is just a little darker than the oh yeah than the mm -hmm. whole thing whereas these match oh. the match the background so it makes that pop up it does it mm -hmm. makes it, it pop out a little look bit a little more. bit like triple yeah. but it's not yeah a little yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so um so i used a darker thread here and i i design or i i quilted that but i like doing this so well that i make sure that i leave this kind of last mm -hmm. so I make myself do the pieced areas mm -hmm. first that aren't as exciting that aren't as mm -hmm. exciting mm -hmm. um and what I did this was blocked so then I just blocked it out mm -hmm. with blocks okay and then I just followed the flying oh, geese yeah. and and got those all mm -hmm. done and then I did go in and do my stenciling along here and this part here is just half the stencil and you know a quarter of the stencil uh -huh. so you can yeah. use multi, same. you know the same stencil for multiple mm -hmm. things whether it's triangles or corners or whatever it is and um so i got the stenciling done and so then i came back lastly and did all of the stippling and i like to do this kind of stippling I it's kind that. of a more of a yeah. little bubble type thing mm -hmm. than it is a, a actual stipple yes. what everybody calls mm -hmm. it looks stipple. like a little peanut uh -huh. yeah, it looks yeah. it looks um or um more upper crust more top of the line more mm -hmm. um it's probably more, more work <laughs> well it is um, <laughs> it is, yeah, more work. It is more work than yeah. just yeah. a normal yeah. but it, i really enjoy doing that and and so then that finishes off the center and then I come out to the borders and mm -hmm. and um you know I have to look at it and decide mm -hmm. what I'm going to do and I thought a, a real nice follow the um, mm -hmm. just a straight line and I believe I did this uh just with my free motion walking foot it's <clears throat> I'm I don't want to put my walking foot on and and do it so um it's the size of my well maybe it is maybe it isn't it's yeah. uh, it's a, you know what it's all free it's motion a, it's so. all free motion and some of them are littler and some of them are bigger and but it's okay. okay yeah it is it's yeah. really okay and i'm trying to see what i did on the oh, yeah, yeah let's look at see. The there back. you go it's exquisite yeah yeah you can really see that a little bit better and on the outside i just did the um just kind of a, a vine because yeah. it was a vine yeah so. yeah that's right. Just That's kind of right. Open so vine. that was that was fun. I mm -hmm. you know you give me quilts to to quilt and I like it because I haven't pieced it and it's fresh and it's new and and I'm like Exciting. oh what am I going to do mm -hmm. with it? I'm just so excited to to get started on it and stuff. So yeah. One of the things you said at the very beginning when you started talking about this quilt is you said I put it up on the wall and kind of looked at it for a while. So basically what that means to me is you put it up there and you let the quilt talk to you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The, and the I think you do that with quilting. I think you do that with piecing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you mm -hmm. let the fabrics look at you and you mm -hmm. let the quilt talk to you. Of what do I need to do for maybe a setting block or what do I need to do for a border or whatever? You let the quilts talk to you. They will. Mm -hmm. Oh sure. They do. It's oh, when they talk yes. back that you run out of the room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Run out screaming. This is just beautiful, Kathy. Thank you. This is Thank you. just uh, awesome, awesome. Okay. She does do good work she sometimes. Does. And I'm so excited <laughs> for you guys to to take her class and see how she does it so that you can you can start doing this too. How many years have you been machine quilting? Um, twenty two. I mm -hmm. kind of was forced into doing it. I uh, was a hand quilter and um I had a real job. I was a medical laboratory technologist, and I, at night, I would, I, I worked in the afternoons. I worked afternoons. So at night, I would pipette at night, and then I would quilt during the day or whatever, and I'd quilt. And this motion mm -hmm. just gave me carpal tunnel. Mm -hmm. So I had to find a new way. And um, it, it, it was a journey. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something you can just sit down yeah. and, and mm -hmm. do automatically. But um, I've really but learned a lot. About it, the thing about it, let's sit, ladies, for a minute. The thing about it is, is that you had the desire and you wanted to do it and you didn't give up. Right. And I remember years when we would go to 
uh, to Houston or we would be at Paducah or whatever and you going over and looking at the quilts because you wanted oh, to, see to see the quilting. Quilting. She yeah. loves yeah. seeing the quilts. She wanted to see the quilting. She knows you know. who's going to win before she tells us and <laughs> yeah. who's, who's, yeah. a possibility who's a possibility of winning. Yeah. Win. And so yeah. you, yeah. you immersed yourself into it and yeah. that's what I talk about is immerse yourself into the square and the square. Mm -hmm. Immerse yourself yeah. into the quilting. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I wanted to do applique years ago, I tried tried it. I was horrible at it. I waited a while. I tried again. I was still horrible at it. But I never gave up. I no. wanted to learn no. to applique so bad that I just kept after it and trying, listening to what people said and trying different techniques until I found one, Which one you liked. that worked for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. you right. know. And we do. Yeah. We have to. Yeah. 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 We yeah. have to. Yeah. Well, to that's like that. machine quilting. I took like, oh, I don't know, four, five, six, seven classes from various teachers mm -hmm. because for some reason uh, someone might say something one way but somebody else says it a different way and then it's like oh yeah so you gleamed a little bit yeah. from that teacher from and a little one, bit from you know, that right. one and a the more bit, classes yeah. you take, take on it yeah. the better you mm -hmm. will be yeah. and yeah. practice and the more confidence yeah right. more confidence okay. you get and you you know you can I know when I was doing it back years ago I my shoulder you know I would be doing this and my shoulders and you yeah. get so uptight yeah. you know about it and you do need to just keep doing it learn to relax mm -hmm. and, and only quilt for it, an hour before yes. you get up and yeah. and you know yeah. walk around and and, and, and that was one of the main things is I thought oh it's machine quilt and I'm gonna get I this do thing this. done yeah. you know yeah. and it'd be hours later and I still wasn't done yeah. and I'd be right. frustrated just because you're machine quilting it doesn't mean that it's a, a quick it's and easy quick thing. and easy yeah yeah right. yeah. yeah and I'll talk okay. about how sometimes you can put a lot of effort into it because you want to make it nice and some of them just need to be done some of them just need yeah. to be done right. and um yeah. not mm -hmm. only do i do free motion but i do straight line quilting i mm -hmm. hope to do a, a class that. on straight line because to me the um well i love this because of the background of this one and it's so it's quilted so heavily it reminds me of a 30s quilt because right. the 30s mm -hmm. quilts right. were it is. usually just two color with a lot of background yeah. and yes. you would have all that beautiful quilting you know on the back and that was really the quilts I fell in love with when I started quilting was those quilts from the 30s, those colors and designs mm -hmm. and the way that they did it. And um, so that I just that just really speaks to me. I love it. Yeah. Well, And you notice that they didn't ask me too many questions about machine quilting. <laughs> well, I'm getting to you now. No, so. <laughs> okay. Because I'm not a... I'm trying. Well, yes. I am trying to machine quilt. I am. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, so I, I'm not sure. She needs to take my class. We're, yeah, she will. Yeah. She will. She'll take it. And we're going to come back to you here in a few minutes, and we're going to talk about threads and needles here okay. in a minute, because I really love that part of the lecture yesterday. So we're not going to do it all. No, we're not going to do an in-depth We're just going to do a little, just... a quick thing on threads and needles, because that is a question I get a lot um, of emails, and when I do lives, and what size of needle, and what kind of thread, and I'm kind of like, okay, well, whatever's in what my drawer, you yeah. know, whatever's, I'm gonna put on yeah, there. that's what I'm doing. I'll and test so it, it yep. was, and, and I think when, like for me, since I've been in the quilt world for so long, and people do consider me to be a professional right. at yes. it, that right. if there's something that you don't know no. very much about, you kind of hate to ask simple <laughs> questions, uh -huh. because you think, well, she doesn't know no. that, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like, uh. so I really enjoyed that yesterday Good. with the threads and needles, because um, I, I, it wasn't like, well, she doesn't know that, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, the filming that we've done this week with Kay has been on, of course, with the square and a square, we have the thing that we've said for years and years, never cut or sew a triangle, so the the, the quilts and the techniques that Kay is doing, um, she's doing um, what I call stash buster quilts, which we did a lot of those mm -hmm. this winter. So I really like to show you how to and encourage you how to get in there and use what you've got. And I think that's probably maybe the theme of the whole quilt club week is, is that this is stuff you can do right now right with now. what you've got. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, whether that's it's right. your sewing machine, yes. whether it's the piecing we're going to show you with the, the quilts that you're doing right. and with the square and square quilts that I'm doing, it's all stuff that you can apply and get in to do. And it's to not do. like, oh, wow, that's really a cool, you know, technique. I might take a class and then the project goes in a box right. and you never right. get back no. to it. Yeah. No, we want you to pull yeah. out those boxes and yeah. see yeah. what's in there. And, you know, I found a box the other day and I'm thinking, yeah. I really don't want to finish it the way it it says. Mm -hmm. I had all these little nine patches made. Mm -hmm. So all I'm going to do is put the nine patches, sash them, 
and, and it's going to be done. boom and done. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I had strips cut mm -hmm. for, I think it was going to be an option two or something, mm -hmm. and I thought, eh, I'm not going on with that. Yeah. I'm and not going to go around. So, I'm panels. not going around this. So <laughs> the block uh, again. I'm just decided I'm just going to put it together and get it done. And it might be my little sample that I will learn to machine quilt on. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because it's not a real mm -hmm. important quilt for me. It's mm -hmm. going to be small mm -hmm. enough uh -huh. mm -hmm. that I have to start on small ones. I can't do big ones yet. Yeah. So, you, you know, but I, I am a good straight line sewer. We're, we're going to test that. Oh. <laughs> So, so with with the quilts that we worked on, the patterns that we worked on with Kay yesterday, it was uh, really um, um, just another open your mind, get mm -hmm. out of the box. Uh, she calls her quilts scrap quilts, and they are, but they're what I call organized scrap right. quilts. Right. I'm, I'm a controlled scrap. Yeah, yeah, you do have some control of that. I, and I'm I think a, a lot of scrapper. people don't do scrap quilts because they want that control. They don't, when they lose it, they don't know if, if this is going to look work. the way they want it to right. look. Right. Right. And um, so you do do what I call organized right. or control scrap I quilting. Do. I do. Look at what you've got. Decide how you're going to use it and do it. And really, um, so the first quilt that we're going to teach in Quilt Club Week is kind of the beginning of your of your system, the, the way that you mm -hmm. want of the group of the quilts. Right. And then the next day, the next one, we're going to take what you've learned in the first one and build on it. Yeah, the second one. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the and third the one, we're going to build on, on it that. and just keep going. Right. And then also just the way that you do the color and the way that you turn it. Right. In the, in right. The, it's just it's Oh, yeah, endless. the design work. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the designs. Design I mean, yeah. just because we design our quilt one way, it doesn't mean that you can't, can't take those blocks. Take and, those because they are all basically turn out to be half square triangles. Mm -hmm. You have a light side and you have the darker side. Mm -hmm. And once you... you but know, in some of those yes. triangles, you've got multiple pieces. Pieces. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So it's yes. not just yes. two triangles. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. And that's no. the cool part. That's cool yes. part. That's like what's yeah. up here. Yeah. This is one of them. Yeah. So when we talk about that it's just a half square triangle, you can see this square mm -hmm. with this diagonally through there. So you have this triangle which I don't know if you can tell, but it's strips sewn yeah. together. And then you have this triangle set, which are the squares. And the way that she does it so that you don't have to cut or sew these triangles, and your points are where they're supposed to be, and you're not cutting this as a triangle and trying to sew it onto that. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. you're always working with squares or strips, which is that's what right. we love. Is, yeah, that's we learn that from you. We job. learn that <laughs> because we can do squares we and can strips. Do it, right. Because the, any human, even if you're not average, right. can do squares and strips. Right. Sure. Yeah. right, right. And then also with your designs, you take a lot of pre-cuts. Right. I so do. tell us about yes. that. Yeah, I do. We do a lot of pre-cuts because we did own a quilt shop. So mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of pre-cuts come in, and that's what people buy. We love those pre-cuts. So what do you do with them? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of our uh, patterns that we've designed uses those pre-cuts. You know, cut them down into squares. These were, you know, I think these were leftover jelly rolls mm -hmm. that I had mm -hmm. that I've used for this. Mm -hmm. So I've just used those. When you're done with the project, cut them up into squares. You know, I have, this is my uh, real expensive uh, <laughs> basket here, container. container. Yeah, did strawberries come in this? Yeah, or probably. Um, or lettuce. I think yeah. maybe it was a spring yeah. mix. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a spring mix here. So, you know, I just throw those two and a half inch squares in there that I have left over. And then I just kind of sit down and sew them together into, you know, two patches usually. And then I mm -hmm. can add and figure out what I'm going to do with them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I love the pre-cuts because they're kind of already done for you. Mm -hmm. The five-inch charms. Well, the cutting's mm -hmm. done. Yeah, the cutting's yeah. done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some patterns for five-inch charms. Mm -hmm. And you can, we that particular pattern that we have is, I think we have eight different sizes of quilts. Yes. In Our that particular. Have multiple sizes. Multiple sizes yeah, so is any what. Any size you want. Any size yeah. you basically yeah. want. And yeah. so, um, you know, we've designed quilts. It's kind of easy and quick mm -hmm. and to get them done but they look mm -hmm. really good. they look good. beautiful. Yeah, they look they, beautiful. They, yeah. they do. Look they like do. A lot of work. They do. So, so we'll be talking about that and how I think I'm going to be giving a little lecture too mm -hmm. on kind of organizing your room. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I know one lady said how do we get inspired? Yeah. 
you know, I've kind of lost my inspiration with all that's going on this uh-huh. year. And I think we've all kind of been there. I've, you know, I've been disappointed because I haven't been able to, we haven't been able to go see our friends. And you this, had a big cruise plan. And I had a big cruise plan for Europe. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, that couldn't go that. And that's probably yeah. going to be mm-hmm. the last one that we kind of figured we'd probably yeah. be able to go on. Because you sold your shop. You yep. retired. Your husband retired. You had these plans. And you wanted to travel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we yeah. wanted to travel. So yeah, no, that's all that's so been squashed. Yeah. But, uh, uh how to get inspired? I don't know if if you have your sewing area. You know, I have a sewing room that I go up to. Well, whenever I went up there, I had the same beige brown walls on all all of it for twenty years, and I was tired of that. I, I it didn't bring me joy to go up there, and I didn't really want to go up there and work because mm-hmm. it was just really dull. Yeah. So I went out. Bought me some paint, some kind of a nice, it's called Tidewater, it's a blue, and I just started painting sections (laughs) of my room. Because our sewing rooms are very (laughs) in-depth. So, you know, I I moved off what was on this one little wall, and I have kind of half walls because I don't, I'm in a above a garage so they're half walls so they're not real tall and i just took my so you didn't have to get a ladder no i didn't have to get a ladder no except for the ends i had to get a ladder but uh and i started painting yeah and i had a pegboard up there did i take the pegboard down no No. i just kept painting over it i did take the stuff off and paint it well that was good you know but I didn't do it all in one day. Yeah. It took, you know, it yeah. took me several weeks to paint it. And, and then it could talk to you yeah. and say, hey, I want to yeah. keep it What this do color. I want? And there's yeah. things there that I didn't want anymore. So I got rid of Purged it. them, got rid of I, it. You know, mm-hmm. I had a cutting table there that I'd had for 30 years. Did I need that cutting table? Mm-hmm. No. Your big, big one? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, not the one oh. I'm working on. This okay. was my original one that okay. I started out with. Yeah, so it was smaller. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it had leaves that came mm-hmm. up. And yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't use it. It yeah. was the TV was on it. So yeah. I got rid of that because mm-hmm. every time I looked at it, it just made me sad. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is. Ugh. So I went yeah. and went to Hobby Lobby, bought me a nice little a white cabinet mm-hmm. with some doors on it and some drawers in the middle and put the TV on it. And it's like, oh. It's oh, pretty. I have a cute little room. I have a cute little <laughs> room. I painted my file cabinet because I was going to get rid of it. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just paint it. Yeah. So that's how so I kind of get inspired. A space. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's cool. And if you've got stuff in there that does, you know, if you're sharing a room with other people and there's other things in there, then okay. But don't let them get into your sewing space. Keep it theirs and yours. Theirs is there and, and you have yours. Yeah. And that's exactly the way my room is. I have, yeah. it's a big bonus room and my husband has the front part of it and he's got the couch and his tv and things his for stuff. His, his stuff, stuff up there and then the rest of the room is is mine and i've got my design wall and my mm-hmm. sewing machine and i've got my closet and everything and to give me inspiration uh when this pandemic first started i thought well i'm gonna get in there and and clean it out and mm-hmm. and like we've been talking yeah. all along i've been purging of some of the Purging. stuff that i didn't want and then there were projects in there that are half done and Oh, I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna put this, and I, you know, it's something I wanted to continue with. So I have a little drawer that has all these projects that I want to continue on, and and um, if I didn't, then I would just sew up the few blocks that I had made, or or put them in the orphan thing, and eventually go back to it. But mm-hmm. I've made a lot of. Um, Charity quilts, charity quilts and stuff, just smaller yeah, quilts. Yeah, you do a because, lot for yeah, I yeah. do a lot for the military charity and, mm-hmm. and the quilts and, of valor and mm-hmm. stuff, and yeah. and um, so that's been my inspiration. Mm-hmm. That I just dig through my stuff and mm-hmm. organize it. I put all my right. um, pre-cuts together and mm-hmm. some of the boxes mm-hmm. that I so have you know what you have. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh yeah, and yeah. It's so great to know what. you And have. until you use it, you want to look at it and get enjoyment. Right. That's right. And that's if right. it's all. Organized right. good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And if you yeah. haven't used something, uh, you know, I'd like to bring it forward and use bring, it. Bring yeah. it and have it available in your area so you yeah. know what you have. Yeah. Now, if you're not going to be using it, if it's a batting or something, Put if you have another room, get it out of there. 
put it someplace else. And in so when you need it, then you can bring it in. Yeah. But don't have it all you laying it there. there. You don't yeah. need it. Yeah. Just your important things that you need right. daily. I'm right. a minimalist. I don't want a yeah. lot of stuff in my work yeah. area. And right. I, I, and yeah. I talk about that in the premium club. They said, yeah. you just need a few things and get yeah. the things right. that work. Right. And, and right. keep, done. I keep... Yeah on it and yeah. you know i keep changing everything constantly it's we've got a, a lot of people motion. asking about quilt club so i'm going to tell them a okay. little bit more about quilt club so the first thing you need to do is you need to go and get signed up for quilt club and what i mean by signing up it means that you're going to go to this uh link that steve is giving is that right on here it's on the thread right it's now. on the thread right now and what you do to sign up is you basically just put your email in there, right, Steve? That's what you're doing. Because we're going to communicate with you guys through email so that you don't have to look through Facebook and YouTube and wonder where it is and what's going on. It'll be right there in your email box. And on Friday, we're going to actually start sign-ups for it. And um, we'll be doing all types of little uh, advertisements on our Facebook and YouTube where we um, you know, show you the different classes that we're gonna offer and um, have the lineups for you. So it's going to be the first full week in October. We've got machine, uh, we have um, uh, lectures, we have demos, we have classes. So think about when you go to a quilt show, what do you do? You watch a little demos, you set in lectures, and you take more in-depth classes, and you get to look at quilts and get excited. We want you to do this with your friends. We want you to get your friends to be signed up with it so that you can be with your friends on FaceTime, and you can be watching and participating in the same class or lecture with your iPads or your computers or however you're going to watch this. And so during that week, say like the first day, we'll have certain numbers of lectures and classes and demos. You'll be able to watch them. Then the next day, we're going to have new classes, lectures, and demos. You can watch them, and you can go back and watch replays of day one. And then day three, we'll have new classes. You can go back in and watch those on replays of day one and day two. And then for a couple of days after, so a week is like seven days, so you're going to have the three days of classes. Then you'll have like four days that you can go back in and re-watch all of those. So Quilt Club week is a week, and so you'll have access to all of those classes during that week. And it's, um, it's a very minimal price. If you can go to Starbucks and buy something, then you're going to be able to sign up for Quilt Club week. And we're going to give you those details in your email, so everything is written out so that you know. And we're going to start sign-ups on those on Friday. And you will have an early bird pricing. That'll be your best price to start signing up. And I don't know how many days yet you'll have at that early bird price, but probably each uh, week to two weeks that price will go up so you need to do that if you are already a premium club member then you don't have to um, sign up uh, with finances you're already signed up for it and you're you get to come and enjoy all of that during that week and then of course it'll be loaded into the portal for you to watch over and over again those of you that are not premium club you can get information and you can sign up for premium club if you're only interested in Quilt Club Week and the classes that we have that, we'll also have the week option for you to watch or maybe you want it for a month. We'll have an option where you can watch those classes and videos for a month. There'll also be handouts for you for um, not all of the classes, but make sure that you look for a handout that might go with that class. And then any of the supplies and tools that we talk about during class will be on our Quilt Club Week website so that you can... Uh, you don't have to go searching for those products. You can find everything we've talked about right there on the Quilt Club Week uh, website. We have a lot of fun and exciting things planned for you. I know you're going to enjoy it. I know that you're going to get a hundred times more than your money's worth. You, when you find out the price of this, it's it's so inexpensive. It's not even a tenth of what one class would be. No, oh. it's, no, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You you wouldn't you would pay. 10 times more for one class, and you're going to get all of this week uh, for that price. So I know you'll be excited uh, about that, and it'll be um, be something that you can do and enjoy. And, and, and then if you like it and you want more, then you can join Premium Club, and we'll have all kinds of, of different things going on. We'll give you all the details. We have a lot going on, so I can't mm -hmm. just tell you all of it verbally. We'll put it in your email and have it all written out for you so that you can see what you're mm -hmm. going to do. Really, the amount of classes and lectures and demos that we have each day um, are, are almost on the edge of too much for that day. When you go right. to a, 
um, a quilt uh, environment for like a week of right. Paducah or Houston. Right. It's you are on overload yeah, every you are, yeah. day, you are. and that's part of the fun of going <laughs> oh, yeah. to it. It is, but, but... Once, but the thing is, is that when you're doing that live and you've done it. Um, you don't get to go the next day. You don't you get, get to go back and take the class again. Yeah, and yeah. go back and say, okay, now what did my teacher say in class? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with this, you get to go back and watch it over right. again. Right. And say, okay, I, I slept on it. Now I'm going to watch it again. And what oh, did she say? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, in a class, you know, they tell you buy all this fabric and you have all this fabric ready, and and, and then you, you take, take the, it and you get, get one, one block, block done. done. Yeah. And it may not be what you really like. Yeah. So you'll be able to watch all and of this. And so you can go and, back and, then and decide read. Yeah. What, what, you know, what I really want to do. Right. What, what's really in my lineup of what I'm looking what, for right. in, in my personal quilt life. So right. I'm excited about that. And the other thing is, is that when you're doing our online classes, you get to actually see the teacher doing the work instead of the teacher kind of standing up in and, a in-person in right. And showing you and telling you, and then you sit down at a machine that you've never Don't sewn never before, right, right, right? And try to do what that teacher has has shown sure. you. So, yeah. um, to yeah. me, taking the online classes the way that we do them are yes. are really We're just excellent. Yeah, you don't have to pay for the mm -hmm. travel. You don't right. have to haul your sewing machine. You don't have to sew on a machine that you don't know. You know, and what if you know, like, you would sign up months ahead of time, and what if by the time it comes, you're sick, somebody's sick, you don't yeah. get to go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or even you get there and that morning you wake up and you're like, okay, where is my house? I really don't feel yeah. very good. You know, yeah. whatever. You're going to be able to, I always say, be in your pajamas and your so bunny house shoes. Your own environment. Yep. Set at your yeah. own machine, your yeah. own table. You're not already wore out because you spent time traveling. Sure. You right. know, you didn't spend your money on travel. And so, uh, to yeah. me, the, the new online stuff that we're doing is, is really the best of, of all of Both it. Worlds. It, it is. It is. It's excellent. It's excellent. Yeah. It's yeah. excellent. Yeah. So make sure you go to the um, uh, information that has been put on our live today and sign up for Quilt Club Week so that you can get the details. And then on Friday, and if you have questions, um, you can put them in on that. And then we're going to do another quick live on Friday. I don't know for sure what time it'll be in the morning and I don't know for sure what time I mean what we're going to show you but if yeah. you have if you have stuff or questions, questions get them in and yeah. we'll address we'll, those sure. on um yeah on Friday so that you can know more about it and we're going to keep doing more up and to so we have a couple of um I don't know how many weeks maybe five weeks till quilt club week mm -hmm, so probably. we're going to keep giving you more information and telling you about it but anytime I offer something the best time to do it is always that first time I offer it. That's always going to be your best price for any any uh, online teaching, your best price for the new fabric or whatever. It's always that first time that we offer it. It's always your best price. Right. Uh, when you wait, then that's when the prices um, sure. go up. So, um, um, I want to, um, how long have we been going? An hour and 20. Hour and 20. Hour and oh, 20 wow. Minutes. So we're, you know what? We're going to save the thread. I know I said yes. we were oh, going okay. to do we'll it. Oh, we'll save that until Friday. Yeah, Friday. but I, re I really think we've gone long enough. And, and um, yeah. So on Friday, we're going to do the thread. We're going to talk about needle and thread with machine quilting, the weights, the sizes, what I talked about, how that I feel stupid asking because people think <laughs> I should know it. Right. So we're going to... That's you not your know specialty. It. I was no, I didn't know because it. Because you didn't, didn't know it. I was yeah. like, yeah. I knew I'm a little bit, but not not yeah. quite as much. Yeah. No, yeah. no, We didn't no, get to no. tell our story today, but that's all right. No, we we'll tell our... Friday. We'll start our story oh, Friday. Yeah, we've been, oh. a lot, we've been together lots of times. Yeah, so we've got... Let's do... Go ahead. You want to finish with the story? Is it going to be too long, you think? I don't know. Okay, okay well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll tell you. So we're yeah. going to give you a tidbit. I mean, yeah, you know. we had a lot of teaching we today. We had a lot of teaching yeah. today. So, yeah, we did you know, their teaching. brain is probably fried at yeah. now. But but so, you have to stay tuned for Friday, Friday because. come back. We have this story. We have story. stories. You know, road. when you've been on the road for 30 years, like all of us have, you have a lot <laughs> yep. of stories. So yep. we're, we've got one story in particular we're yep. going to tell you. It seems like Paducah. It was all three of us. Yeah. It happened to all three of us. At Paducah. Paducah, there's always a story. Your crazy stuff happens at Paducah. My crazy stuff happens at Houston. Houston. Houston, yes, you yeah. do because you lost some tires oh and other stuff yeah. at Houston. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. But we want to give a shout out oh, to, yeah, to all our, of our friends. Yeah, there's 
uh, back in Franklin, Tennessee, yep. say thank you for watching us. And also our certified teachers, Jody right. certified over the years. Yeah. Certified yeah. teachers Swear over the years. years and that we've become friends. We you know, they're from far and wide. Yeah. And, yeah. Travel and, together and, and, and we went to shows together. Yeah. And did things. Yeah. We, we did our own camps and retreats. Yes, yes. right. Yes. We had yeah. our own yeah. retreats and, and we miss you all and uh, we love you and uh, uh, we hope we all can get back together uh, soon. sometime soon. 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 Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. planning another yeah. retreat so we all can. And speaking can get of out. retreats, we're going to go Friday. We're actually going to go look at a retreat center. Yes. 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 And uh, see about getting a date chosen for next year for a Square and a Square retreat. And the best way to always stay current and know about all this stuff is to be on our email list so that you can get the information. Right. And uh, one other thing about Quilt Club Week is we are going to have a special. Facebook page for Quilt Club Week. Uh, that way people who are experiencing Quilt Club Week can interact with other people so we can get oh, more social okay. oh, that'd be nice. more social oh, cool. involvement going yeah. on because that's yeah. something that we all want and miss. Um, right, it and, is. And, and it's part of a Quilt Club Week is getting to talk to people about right. that. Uh, did you take that class? What did you think about, think about so that? And so, you know, as uh -huh. you're sitting at a lunch table with people that you've yeah. never right, right, right. seen before, we don't. we can't do that now. No. No, so no, we'll have a Facebook no. page where all the Quilt Club people can, can, talk, can talk. interact. That's great. So make sure you share. Yep. Make sure you tell all your buddies about it. The more we can get involved uh, with it, the more exciting it's going to be for you guys and for us. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on 